Good morning, everyone. So the book I have selected to summarize is the Seven Habits of Highly Effective People by Stephen R. Covey. So he was an American author, educator, and a businessman. And uh, the famous this Stephen R. Covey, he uh, studied about the people who are successful in life. About and uh, he read almost all literatures related to successful people. Uh, it was it was written about 200 years back, and then he summarized and he realized some key points, and that key points here he is representing in this book. So uh, Stephen uh, he describes that there are seven basic habits which will eventually make a person effective, and eventually uh, this is the it's uh, the seven habits shown by successful people in their life. These seven habits are uh, be proactive and begin with the end in mind, uh, put things first and think win win, uh, seek to understand and seek to understand and then to be understood, synergize and last one is um, sharpen the soul. So this is the first habit he is saying is about uh, the product. So he classifies people, categorizes into two, that is proactive people and reactive people. So the proactive people are the people who takes uh, who takes responsible for their actions. They will uh, they will always try to work on their actions. They will not blame on the situations. Uh, they will be thinking, okay, how can I solve this situation and work? And being reactive uh, is that reactive people will always uh, they will always um, they will always uh, tell about the situation if the situation is not. They will always play a victim of a victimhood of they will always play in the situation. But proactive people will try to solve the situation and work and how can I manage the situation and work. And there is this concept of circle of concern and circle of influence which he describes, which is that in proactive people there will be a positive energy always within them. So their circle of concern will be less and the circle of influence will be greater. But in case of reactive people, they will be like uh, their uh, circle of concern will be larger than the circle of influence. They will always, uh, always blame the situation and they will play the narrator, uh, they will play the victim. And it will be like negative energies always uh, within them. And that's the first habits, habit he is explaining about that is to be proactive. And the second habit is begin with the end in mind. He asks us to okay, think about. Uh, about your think about your funeral and then uh, what will happen and how will you, how will the people remember you and that way and what. Then he tells us to prioritize the things we want to do in our life and uh, also said, tells us to divide the things we have to do in our life into four quarters and think which one you are giving importance and what. Like that way, uh, begin to end, begin with the end. Think about the end and prioritize the things you want to do right. That's the thing he is explaining with this with uh, second habit. Then the third habit is uh, put things first. It's also mainly focusing on the prioritizing matter. Like uh, there will be two things: urgency and uh, urgency and the things which is relevance, relevance and urgency. We will think that okay, this matter has to be solved right now and it is urgent. But the thing is, it will not be so relevant. So we should focus on the relevant matters. Like that way, he uh, conveys the reader to be focusing on the right thing at the right time, not to give uh, time to other things. And the fourth habit is uh, thing win win. In thing win win condition, uh, he's, uh, in this thing win win habit, he is explaining about six paradigms that are paradigms are uh, models uh, which can be shifted like that way. There is a win win condition, there is win loss condition, there is loss win condition, there is just a loss condition, there is a win condition, then it is win win or no win condition. So, mainly the author suggests us to follow the win win condition, then mutually beneficial condition. The both parties, mainly this book is based on leadership qualities and management, like leadership management. And in case of businesses and all, he is saying that you should always focus on the win win condition because both the parties are both the parties have benefited from that condition. And uh, the thing is, uh, I forgot to tell one thing. This author, mainly the self-help self -help books were based on that. Independence matter. Like, you should be independent in your life. That's the thing mainly all the self-help books focused on. But this particular author, he said that, no, independence 
independence is not the matter. You should, you should, first you should be independent. Yes, it's true. Like he converted the thought process of being dependent to independent to interdependence. Like you should be interdependent to one another, not on depend, not on independence. Okay, we should be independent. We should uh, be able to do our own jobs. But you, you should focus on interdependence because collaborative work it eventually gives more uh, fruitful success. Like that manner, uh, the author conveys to us. And uh, other is something like uh, pub private victory, public victory, and renewal. The, in private victory, the first three habits come. The sec uh, second three habits come in this uh, public victory. That is to think win win, and uh, like we should opt for win win condition if both the parties are benefited. And the next condition is the uh, next habit is that um, seek to uh, seek to understand and then to be understood. Like we should be a reflective uh, listener. Uh, when someone is communicating with us, we shouldn't value, we should be non-judgmental to them. We shouldn't be biased and we shouldn't judge on their opinions at all. We should be an effective listener. To be successful in life, we should be effective. To be a successful person, you should be able to listen to others, like what others have to convey. And we shouldn't be judgmental. We shouldn't be uh, take care. Uh, we should when they are conveying to us, we shouldn't be focusing on our own opinions but rather to be a uh, reflective listener like what they are telling and how uh, we can hear them out like we should be a good listener that's the that's the fifth habit he is asking us to cultivate and the next one is uh, next one is synergize synergize habit mainly focuses on to work collaboratively and have a good cooperation within the team and uh, when all are working for a same particular matter, then it will be a positive output, like that matter, like that matter, uh, the other kind is. And the last habit is um, sharpen the saw. Okay, even though we are like uh, doing all these things, even though we are cultivating all these six habits, if our physical, mental, emotional and social well-being is not proper, we wouldn't be able to be a successful person in life. So uh, the other conveys us to, he describes to be successful, you should also sharpen the soul, like sharpen yourself, like your body is the only thing which you have ultimately, so you should be physically well, uh, like you should be doing all the exercises and maintaining your physical well-being, next your mental well-being, uh, like you should be in a very good mental health condition and then it's emotional well-being, connecting to parents and partners and all, and ultimately physical, mental, emotional and social, you should have social well-being, like you should be talk, uh, talking to others and you should have a social habit of uh, talking and communicating with everyone and uh, the book is mainly, to, it mainly, it's like a, actually it's quite a dry book because it's mainly focusing on the thing only, like it's not a narrative matter but in certain aspect he is giving some stories to connect with us and the first story he is describing is about his own son. Like uh, his son was an average person, both in academics and in sports and all. Both of both his wife and this author, they tried to motivate him, to persuade him in a good way and all. And later on they decided that, uh, later on they discovered that their perception of their son is actually very low. That's why they couldn't, uh, that's, that's also a matter which is affecting the son. And they realized, okay, when we change our perception only, our son can actually change. And they changed their perception and they just saw him as a very good person who is capable of doing everything. And he eventually, his uh, grades became higher, like his grades were improved and the uh, son, he was able to do well in sports and all. So, uh, the author, first of all, he convinced the idea that how perception actually matters, what we percept of person, what we think of ourselves and what we see, that's the thing others also see with us, with us, within us. And then as uh, all these seven habits uh, he is describing like this. And uh, I think I covered all part of the book. Mm -hmm. It's a very uh, good book and it's a bestseller book. Uh, over 25 million copies are sold and it's still relevant in today's world because people read this book, uh, it's a timeless book actually. He mainly focus on the habits and tells that, okay, when you want to shift, uh, there is an important thing about time management is also given in this book which 
says that uh, actually you can't manage time. You should manage yourself. Like when we talk about time management, it's not about actually managing time, but about managing yourself. Like prioritizing your works and doing the correct things. Like focusing on yourself is the first thing you should try when you uh, focus on time management. Thank you.